one of the greatest examples of racism and differential treatment of black people in this country in modern times can be seen in the contrast between the way in which the federal government and state and local government dealt with the crack epidemic as compared to the opioid crisis. Crack addicts were not treated as a mentally ill population. The crack epidemic was not treated as a public health crisis. The crack epidemic was treated as a crisis in criminality and a need for greater criminal justice oversight of the black community. More police, more arrests, more prisons, very little attention to treatment and rehabilitation. The crack crisis swelled up the prisons, not because black people were selling dope. It was more so because black people were using the dope. There's way more users than there are sellers. And because if you got caught in possession, the police arrested you based on possession. So you would go to jail based on the intent to use to self-medicate when you should have been going to a mental health hospital or a treatment center. That is what exploded the prisons during the crack epidemic because they were incarcerating mentally ill addicts. We fast forward to this century and you see an opioid crisis like nothing I've ever seen in my life. When I drive down through Frankfurt, and I think Frankfurt and Kensington may have the worst opioid strip in America. Zombie land. Open air. Use a bed with the police sitting there watching them. You would have never in your life seen a crack sale in front of a police officer. But you will see white people, poor white, buy, sell, and use crack, excuse me, opioids in open air in front of the police and nothing is getting done. It's being treated as a public health crisis. It's being treated as a mental health emergency. It is being treated as a medical epidemic of grave proportions. These folks are getting treatment. They're getting set aside money. They're getting social work. They're getting free rehab. They're getting hospitalization. They are not going to jail. They are deliberately protecting white opioid addicts from incarceration unlike what they did with blacks. Even look at marijuana. Marijuana is one of the greatest contradictions in modern time because you have 50 years of black men going to jail for possession and intent to distribute marijuana. Now you got white men making millions and billions of dollars off of the cannabis industry. Wait a minute. You destroyed 50 years of black families over weed. You destroyed 50 years of black families over weed. And now with the stroke of a pen, it has become a multi-billion dollar industry for the white man. Look at the hypocrisy there. And it's interesting because when we talk about reparations, anybody who was wrongfully incarcerated, and in my opinion, if you were incarcerated for anything that is now acceptable, you're wrongly incarcerated. Reparations is owed to all those black men and women who themselves and their families were destroyed as a result of wrongful incarceration. America wants to eliminate the African. And she's using every strategy at her disposal to do so. And when we look at drugs, chemical warfare was introduced into the black community by the CIA with crack in the 1980s to prevent another social re reform movement like the Black Panther Party or the Civil Rights Era. The reason you get crack in 80 is because they shut the door on the Panthers in the mid 70s and they wanted to make sure the black community would never be able to rally again to its for its own liberation. And that's when they dropped off the chemical warfare. They actually gave us chemical and biological. They gave us AIDS and they gave us crack. We have never rebounded as a community since the AIDS epidemic and the crack epidemic. I believe that American society and Western culture in general is a very sick, narcissistic, and unhealthy reality. And I think that the technocracy and the illusion of democracy has convinced people that we're living in a civilization 
because we have technological sophistication and the right to vote. You cannot call a society civilized when people walk into the supermarket and inadvertently kill. Walk into a school and shoot up 20, 30 kids at a time. Go into a subway, detonate a bomb. Kill the mother of their child, kill all their children, take their own life. That's not a healthy society. But because capitalism controls the collective consciousness of America, we believe that if you are able to buy, purchase, sell expensive things, that automatically means that you are a healthy people. America is like a rotten cake with the most expensive icing in the world put on it. And you don't know until after you've consumed too much of the cake. You understand me that this thing was sick all along, but you were distracted by the appearance of things and not the uh, reality of things. In my definition, America could not qualify as a civilization. It could qualify as a technocracy, a society ruled by computers and technology and technological advancements is not a civilization. For it to be a civilization, you must be about the perfection of the art of being civilized. When you look at the amount of black people who are murdered, killed, disenfranchised in this country, how can you call it a civilization? I just saw the other day how President Biden has made it legal for Ukrainian immigrants to get SSI checks. So if you are a Ukrainian refugee in America, you can apply for SSI. Help me understand that because we have the highest black homelessness population since the 1960s. You got black people living on the street because they can't find a job and can't get any subsidy. But you're going to bring immigrants. Didn't build this country. Don't pay taxes. Don't have a job. Never paid into Social Security. But they're going to get Social Security benefits. You're taking from black people and giving to white immigrants. If that is not the greatest example of white privilege in this decade, I don't know what is. That's not a civilization. To neglect those who built the country and give their resources to white people from another land is one of the greatest examples of disproportionality, bias, racism, and discrimination I've ever seen. And at the same time, you're sending the Haitians back. Haitians got to get on a boat and go home, but the Ukrainians can come get free housing, free medical, free insurance, and an SSI check. But at the same time, white people tell black people, get off welfare. When are you going to tell the Ukrainians to get off of welfare? And the irony in sending the Haitians back, why is America the size she is? The Haitian Revolution bankrupted Napoleon's France. He had to sell for pennies on a dollar Louisiana the Louisiana Purchase, which tripled the size of the United States. America is the size she is because of the Haitian people, but you send them home and Ukrainians who never did nothing for you, they get to get black people's reparation money.